Welcome. Welcome to our home. My name's Taryn, this is Chuck, and we're some of the leaders of Catalyst Vineyard Church. And as a church, we always say, come as you are. And so we really hope that you have come as you are. Yeah, so no need to like tidy up, uh, <laughs> which uh, judging by the photos that were sent through over the last few days, you definitely didn't last time. And I just want to say, guys, like have a bit of pride. You know, like at the end of this thing, you guys are going to be knee deep. <laughs> It's terrible. It's uh, terrible. So yeah, no need to no need to tidy up. You no can... need no need to um, dress up. Yeah. Uh, no need to get up even. Even you could have your brunch. It's probably is brunch time, isn't it? Really than breakfast, but you could be eating your brunch while you're watching us. Yeah. So that's brilliant. Come as you are. Anyway, we're delighted about that, and we know that we've got people that um, last week I think watched us um, in Australia, uh, Uganda, Korea. Uh, America, America. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's all happening. Really, really great. And maybe if you are watching from a different part of the world that we haven't mentioned, then why don't you just go on the chat and just tell us where you're from? We'd love to hear from you. That'd be wonderful. Yeah, definitely. Also, later on in the show... <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that. Okay. Later on in the episode... <laughs> no, later on in, in the church at home... <laughs> We are going to take communion together, which we're, to be honest, really excited about. Yeah. And so hopefully you, you got some pre-warning, but even if you didn't, you can just press pause. I think you can press pause. Really? 
What, even yeah. when it's live? I think you could press pause. Oh. Try it, try it. Um, <laughs> if you can't press pause, then you'll just have to run quickly we'll just... and get something to drink and something to eat uh, is pretty much what you need for communion. So we've got the very, very last black currant squash from the cupboard. We so have. the kids aren't going to be delighted about that necessarily. Uh, and also we've got some flour tortilla as our bread. So something edible, something liquid. And then at the end of the uh, time together, we're going to share communion. So please do that. Yeah, we're delighted that um, literally hundreds of people that aren't connected to our church currently have been watching church at home. And if that's you, hello, welcome. We're delighted you're here. And uh, it may be that you want to chat with someone. You've got a particular need um, or maybe you're just wanting to explore what this whole faith journey looks like for you. And if that is the case, then we'd love to connect you. And the easiest way of doing that is... Yeah, so you can either, if you're watching live, you can just click connect at the top of the screen. Um, if you're not watching live, then you just need to go to hello.catalyst.vin. No www or anything like that, just hello.catalyst.vin. And then you'll be able to let us know what you need. And we'll be, I guess we'll be able to, you know, help you in where, yeah. where we can. So our, yeah. our team, our, our pastors and so on are ready to help you. They'd love to connect with you. So please do do that. Brilliant. Well, I think we're pretty much ready to go. So let me just say, oh, I always want to say ground rules. No, um, and I wrote it, I even wrote it down. Pointers. Oh, there you Some go. pointers on how to get the very most out of the next few minutes, the next two hours. It's not going to be uh, two hours. No, it's not going to be two hours. Uh, how to get the most. And, and they're really these. So, so uh, we say this every week. The first one is um, we're not doing this for entertainment. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is about a belief, really, that Jesus said, that whenever we gather together, he'll be with us. Yeah. And so we're gathering together in the virtual space, in, in cyberspace. Do people still use that word? Well, we're gathering together and Jesus is going to meet with us. And, and so uh, my strong encouragement would be put your phone to one side, unless you're watching it on your phone, um, and just give yourself to this moment. Give yourself to God. Open your hearts, open your hands and be ready for whatever it is that God wants to do. That's the first thing. The second thing is that there is a chat thing uh, for the people who are watching it live and you're really welcome to just say hi and all of that. Uh, like maybe don't during the worship like carry on nattering away because you wouldn't probably do that. Well, maybe you would, but you probably would do that uh, if yeah, we were there in a physical connect. space. Yeah. So just give yourself to God in that yeah. moment. And, but also, just to let you know, that if you would like prayer for anything at all, then all you need to do is click on the button that says live prayer, and our pastors are, uh, that basically links to our pastors, and then you can just have a moment with one of those pastors to just, you know, take a moment to pray, at, at, albeit in typing yeah. form. And so you're welcome. You're and you so can do that at any point during this time. You anyway. can. Yeah, we'd love you for you to do that. Absolutely. So now what we've got is... Um, Maria from the Aberdeen Central site, she wrote a poem and sent it to us this week and we loved it. And so we asked her to film it, which she has done. Mm -hmm. And so this is Maria's poem right now. The church is not a building, it is the people of the Lord. And although we may not be meeting, it doesn't mean we stop listening to the call. To go out into the community and be his hands and feet, whether that's seeing people electronically or buying food to meet their needs. In these difficult times, it feels like the church has been scattered in many ways. However, we are united more than ever before. We are the embers that can fan into flames. So let's strengthen our tents and towns and let God's love be known. Let's pray for each other, talk to each other and make sure no one's alone. In these times of fear and stress, let us look to the Lord while we wait for the time where we can physically gather together once more. Brilliant. Thanks, Maria. Wonderful. Thank you. So our worship this morning is going to be led by the newlyweds. Yeah. yeah. Andrew and Lizzie, um, they're leading worship from uh, their place in Aberdeen. Honeymoon lockdown. <laughs> Honeymoon lockdown. <laughs> so if they could just like stop kissing for a moment. <laughs> can I say that? No, like... I don't think you... oh, anyway. Never mind. It's, it's that. out there now. <laughs> So uh, anyway, they're, they're going to lead us in worship. Thank you guys for doing that. Yeah. So Taryn, why don't you pray? Yeah. And Lord, we welcome you. We welcome you into every home, every bedroom, 
every heart this morning and we say, come and have your way in us, come and meet with us as we sing songs of praise and adoration to you, Jesus. Would your spirit fall? Would you come and meet with your people as we glorify your name, as we lift you high? Amen. 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 There was a moment when the lights went on And death had claimed its victory The King of love had given up his life The darkest day in history There on a cross they made for sinners For every curse is blood atoned One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake and the veil was torn what sacrifice was made as the heavens roared oh hail King Jesus
so I will sing all you've done and I'll remember how far you carried me from beginning until the end cause you Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for being with us. 
We thank you that you'll never leave us or forsake us. Wherever we are right now, whichever home we're in, wherever in the world we are, you can find us. You can come and give us peace and hope. We love you, God. We love you, God. Amen. 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 So um, this is a time now where we're going to open up the Bible together. So if you have a Bible, why don't you just run and grab that now? And um, maybe you don't have a Bible in your house or your flat. And if you don't, then why don't you download it on your phone? The best way of doing that is going to the App Store, typing in Bible, and we would recommend... Um, a Life Church Bible, which is like a, I think the app, the icon is a Bible, like it's reddish brown with a wee cross on it. And it's yeah. probably the top one that you see in your search. So yeah. why don't you do that? Um, because this book, it carries so much hope and so much truth. You know, it's the most relevant, most profound, most um, soul strengthening book you will ever hope to read. And there is a reason why it's the world's number one best selling book. And so if you haven't already maybe started reading the Bible, then my recommendation to you is why don't you give it a go? Start in the New Testament in Matthew, where you'll be introduced to Jesus and the life of Jesus. And uh, just start reading from there and see how you get on. So we've nearly done now two weeks of lockdown. How are we doing? It's been uh, interesting, hasn't it? Adjusting to a different way of living, a different way of working, a different way of shopping, a different way of exercising, also a different way of homeschooling for some of us. Probably the less said about that, the better, I would say. But for so many of us now, we, you've been physically isolated from your friends and family for a long time now. For some of you, you are key workers. You are literally on the front line, putting yourself at risk on a daily basis in order to help and to serve others. And if that is you, we just want to say a massive heartfelt thank you so, so much for all that you are doing. Mm. We don't take you for granted. Our NHS is incredible. You are incredible. Thank you for all that you are doing. We are praying for you. For others of you, because of the lockdown, you are now facing severe financial burden. A burden that you maybe thought you would never have to carry suddenly has landed upon you. And the weight of it maybe is crushing. It's really difficult for you. And that is where this Bible comes in. This word comes in to help us because Wherever we are today, whether we are physically or emotionally feel like we're in lockdown, feel imprisoned or trapped, this Bible is here to help us. Now, the Apostle Paul, he knows only too well what it means to be in lockdown. He is trapped and he's in prison. And so we're continuing in our wee little series called The Prison Letters. And so we are going to read from Philippians this morning. So why don't you turn to that in your Bible or swipe to that? And we're in 1 Philippians. And we're Philippians gonna... 1. Philippians 1. Thank you, darling. Not 1. I keep saying that. <laughs> Philippians 1. I do know my Bible, honestly. Uh, verses 3 to 6. So why don't you head over to that now? And I'm going to read for you. Okay. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. So as Chuck explained last week, the Apostle Paul, he is... Um, He's writing this letter in prison and he's writing it to his friends in Philippi. And yet in these few little verses that I've just read to you, um, I believe that there are four practices of prison that Paul teaches us that we can implement wherever we are um, around the world today. So practice number one is thankfulness. Verse three, I thank my God every time I remember you. So picture the scene, here's Paul and he's in a cramped prison cell. His only bed would be the cold, hard, smelly, dank floor of his cell. Um, he is separated from his friends. He is in chains. So his wrists and his ankles are shackled, which would be causing him a huge amount of pain. He's been unjustly accused. He's been brutally treated and he has a threat of execution looming over him. Probably if anyone had a right to complain, the Apostle Paul in this moment did. And yet what do we see ringing from his lips? We see thankfulness ringing from his lips. And I love that even in prison, even in the midst of pain and uncertainty, he is still able to find things to be thankful for. And the reason is because for Paul, thankfulness has become part of his daily reality. And that thankfulness has transformed his perspective and actually his life. Thankfulness is about giving thanks to God for every blessing that he gives us from the tiniest thing to the largest things. Being thankful helps to restore our perspective. It fuels our contentment and it keeps our eyes fixed on Jesus, who is always for us, always blessing us, always with us in every season, in every occasion. And so let's be people even in the midst of this pandemic, let's be people who choose to daily choose our hearts to be thankful, to find something to be thankful for. Mm, so good. Okay, practice number two, prayer. Verse four, in all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. So this whole live stream business is a little bit weird, let's face it, you know, um, it's brilliant, but it is weird because we can't connect physically like we would if we were doing church on a Sunday. You know, maybe you're part of the Catalyst family and if we were doing church in a school or in our building, then our church building, then we would be having a coffee, you'd be telling me how you're doing, I'd be telling you how I'm doing. Um, but the reality is, I don't know who's watching this. And so I don't know what your journey's like, your faith journey is like. I don't know if prayer is something that has been um, formed into the rhythm of your life or if you've never even considered praying before. But wherever we're at, the reality is that the wonderful thing about prayer is that absolutely no previous experience is required. Mm. And there is no minimum or maximum amount to how much we can pray. Maybe you've spent the whole of your life never even considering prayer until maybe 30 seconds ago. Maybe you've been a Christian for a really long time and in this season you just sense the Lord is beckoning you into a deeper intimacy as you plant new seeds and water and nurture your prayer life. The reality is that there are so many things right now that we feel disconnected from, but we can never be disconnected from God because prayer is all about connection. It's all about relationship, even in isolation, even in lockdown, even when we feel imprisoned, either uh, physically or emotionally. And Jesus's invitation is available to all of us right here, right now to pray that nothing is too big or too trivial that he doesn't want us to bring to him in prayer because prayer works. I can testify to that. 
You can testify yeah. to that. The billions of Christians across the globe can testify to that as well. Because prayer changes things because God changes things. Prayer makes a way because God makes a way. Prayer is incredibly powerful because God is incredibly powerful. Prayer does the heavy lifting because God does the heavy lifting on our behalf when we're at our wit's end. And I love this quote from William Temple. He said, when I pray, coincidences happen. And when I don't, they don't. So we've got lots of stories that are coming out of our church right now, particularly regarding answer to prayer. But and I don't have time to go into all the stories, but there's just one simple little story I want to highlight and share with you today. And that is our site pastor. Um, her mum phoned her a few days ago to say that she was really concerned about her money. Um, She's not able to work right now. She's on zero hour contract and she was stressing about her finances and she was worried ultimately that she was going to lose her job. And so uh, the site pastor, her daughter said to her, well, mum, I'm going to pray that that doesn't happen. Well, then the very next day, her mum phones her back up and she says, guess what? My boss has been on, on the phone. He wanted to check in to see how I'm doing. And then he said to me, I don't want you to worry about, about money. And so for the next three months, you need to know that we are paying your full salary for you. So you don't need to worry. How wonderful is that? You see, prayer works. God answers prayers. Whether you've been praying for 50 years or five minutes, the encouragement to you today is to lift your burdens and give them to God so that he can do the heavy lifting on your behalf. Okay, so we've had practice thankfulness, practice prayer, and the third practice of prison, practice number three, partnership in hope. Verse five, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. So we have this opportunity, even whilst we're in lockdown, to partner with God and partner with one another to spread hope wherever we can. And I heard a wee story this week about a lady in our church who uh, saw her neighbor, one of her neighbors was in the garden with her children. And she thought, oh, I really want to encourage her. So she got a wee card and a wee little gift together. And in the card she wrote, you are such an incredible mum," and a whole bunch of words to do with what an amazing mum she was. And she parceled it all up and she just posted it through the letterbox. Now, what that lady didn't know was that the day before, her neighbor had gone onto social media to say how, how badly she felt she was doing as a mum right now and how terrible she felt and that she didn't think she was doing a good job at all. Then she receives this card that is basically saying, what an amazing mum you are. I've seen you I, and, and just encouraging this mum in all the little things that she was doing. And this mum was so encouraged by this card that the very next day she went back onto social media. She took a photo of that card and she posted it and said how encouraged and uplifted she felt after receiving that card. And the funny thing is, is that the lady from our church that sent that card isn't on social media. So she had no clue how her neighbor was feeling. You see, in these days, we can remember the hope that we have and what that means for everyone around us. The hope that we have as Christians, we can sow into the lives of other people. You see, Paul is encouraging his friends in Philippi. He's saying to them to keep making known the good news of Jesus. Because this hope that we carry is just is way more than just a mere wish. You know, it's far more than us just kind of thinking, well, you know, it's my own personal strength and desire I've got to muster up and hope for something to happen. That's not what I'm talking about here at all. This hope that we have, this hope that we carry comes from the promises of God and is rooted in the work of Jesus. And maybe you're listening to this today and you're thinking, I'd really like that hope. I don't have that hope that you're talking about, but I want it. 
Well, later on, we are going to give you an opportunity to receive that hope for yourself. And we're going to give you an opportunity, an invitation to um, uh, put your trust in Jesus and to receive that hope. So that's a heads up for you now to be thinking about that. You know, it dawned on me the other day that for such a time as this, we've been made for. For such a time as this, it's no coincidence to God that we are here in these days, in these times. In fact, we are exactly the right people in the right place at the right time. And he has entrusted us in these days to be carriers of hope because the church of Jesus Christ always arises when all hope is lost. Only the hope that we have in Jesus remains. And when we have this hope, when we put our faith and our trust in Jesus, it's like our anchor in the storm. It's like the light that shines in the darkness. And right here and right now, I believe that the Lord is wanting to remind us as to partner with him, to be a dealer of hope to the world. Be a dealer of hope. And lastly, practice number four is transformation. Verse six, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Now, probably all of us knew pretty much that we weren't perfect before this whole lockdown thing. Well, I would imagine that now we can confirm we're absolutely not perfect in any way. You know, for many of us, this has been such a testing time, hasn't it? It's tested our resilience, our patience, and so much more as well. But what if rather than just feeling maybe bad, grumpy because, you know, we shouted at the kids or we had a bit of a difficult telephone conversation with someone and then we go to bed feeling really bad about it or slightly ashamed of ourselves. What if instead we saw this time as a gift, a gift that God has given us that in, that in this situation that is causing those things in us, maybe that we don't particularly like to surface and to rise up, that actually this is a moment for Jesus to come and bring transformation to those parts. Jesus wants to come and transform us. You know, the incredible news is that we don't have to come out of lockdown the same way as we went in. Mm. We don't have to. Yeah. And Paul is encouraging his friends and he's saying that there is absolutely nothing in this life or even after death that can stop God's good work in us. And that includes during a pandemic. All we have to do is once again come before him and place ourselves into his hands and allow him to come and to shape and to mould us and to bring maybe those parts of us that we're not particularly proud of or those rough edges that we would like him to smooth over and say, here I am, make me how you want me to be. Why don't we pray? And Father, we just ask that you would come right now into those places maybe that are hurting, those places that maybe we have a sense of shame over, we're not proud of. We say sorry to you. And we ask, Lord, that you would just come and you would start transforming those parts of us. That you'd start bringing healing that you would lift any shame that we are feeling, that you would pour your hope and your peace into us, that you would speak to us. Father, I pray for, for people maybe that have never heard your voice before, that you would just come and just gently whisper to them. Mm. Thank you, God, that you are a God that brings hope. Thank you that we can connect with you through prayer. We love you. Amen. 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 Good. So this is the part of our time together where we're going to share communion. And so if you've got your edible something and your liquid something that we're going to call bread and wine, 
uh, now is the moment to produce it. But before we do that, we just thought, when we were speaking about this the other day, we thought, hey, this would be the moment to invite anyone who wants to become a Christian to do so right now. Uh, maybe just because uh, communion is a moment to uh, receive afresh the forgiveness of God and to make a fresh start with him. Uh, and so um, this is your opportunity to make a fresh start. M maybe you've never been a Christian or, or maybe you've just been away from God for a long time. This is the moment. And so what we're going to do is I'm just going to say a prayer one line at a time. And if you want to commit your life to Jesus today, you just agree with that prayer, pray it in your own heart or maybe even out loud and Jesus will hear every word, even if you're in your PJs. Um, and also just to say, if you're watching live, feel free to click the button that says, I commit my life to Jesus uh, and just signal, in a sense, your commitment to Jesus to the world. OK, let's pray. My Father in heaven, I'm so sorry I haven't lived my life with you or for you. I really want that to change. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross in my place. Father, I receive your forgiveness. I receive your forgiveness. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to live my life with you and for you from now on. Amen. 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 Brilliant. And I know that some people watching will have done that. If you have uh, and you've clicked the button, now is the moment to click the button that says request prayer and you can meet one of our pastors and pray together just to kind of seal the deal with God. That'd be so lovely if you would do that. OK, so we're going to take communion. First of all, I'm going to read a bit of scripture. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. It's maybe familiar to some people, but here we go. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. Saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Okay. So, just take your bread. This is the body of Jesus broken for you. This is the blood of Jesus shed for you. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that you sacrificed your own life for us. We're so grateful. And today, wherever we are, we just want to make a fresh start with you. Your mercies are new every morning. And so this morning, we receive the fresh start. We commit our lives afresh to you. Amen. 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 Wonderful. So we've just got a few uh, things to tell you about. Notices, I guess. We wouldn't That's be, what uh, makes it legal, doesn't uh, it? I wouldn't <laughs> be church without some notices. So firstly, just to say that our team have been working really hard, our kids team, and youth team have been working incredibly hard and they've got live stream up and running. So for the kids, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. for preschool, 10 a.m. for primary school age kids. It's an amazing it's uh, program. Brilliant. Really highly recommend that. And then for our youth, if you've got kids from P7 upwards, um, youth is happening 6.45 every Tuesday, again, on the live stream. So please tune into that. We'd love for you to do that. Yeah, and then and if you miss any live streams at all, yeah. just go to our YouTube channel, which is easily found on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a massive surprise. Okay, also we're collecting food for Storehouse. So we run a food bank in loads of different places all over Aberdeen and Shire. 
and uh, you might see our vans about if you're about, which probably you're not to be honest, but um, it's all over social media, the details. We're collecting food in a safe way and we're giving it away in a safe way. Uh, please just go on social media, search for us, you'll find us and you'll find the details of that. Yeah. Also, we want to hear about your stories, what God's doing. Um, we want to be able to share stories that are happening. And so if you've got a little God story, no matter how big or how small, would you tell us about it? And the easiest way to share it is? Uh, I think email my story at catalyst.vin. We'd love to hear that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the final thing to say is this, that, that ordinarily we would have a basket at the front of church in every service where people who are regular members of the church can come and give into the baskets. Well, obviously, uh, you know, I mean, you might have a basket in front of your TV, uh, but the money somehow <laughs> needs to find its way from that basket into our bank account. And so the easiest way to do that is uh, give.catalyst.vin. Uh, please do that. But however... If you're visiting, you're a guest here, just be our guest. Yeah. Please don't feel you need to give anything. This is just for our church family to enable the church to continue to operate. Yeah, that's great. So I think we're nearly done. We are, we are. The final thing is we are going over now to, we're jumping over to <laughs> Kingswells, to uh, Mark and Julie, and they are the pastors of our West, Aberdeen West site. So that's a site that kind of reaches out from the west of Aberdeen all the way through to like places like West Hill, Peter Cooter, um, Dunect, I think, uh, all kinds of, uh, Bucksburn. So they are going to pray a blessing over us from the Bible right now. Over to you guys. Hey everyone, it's great to be with you. We're going to pray a blessing that is taken from the book of Romans in the Bible, chapter 15, verse 13. Let's pray. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Well, it's been really fun. We love you guys. Stay well. God bless. And we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.